Techies and Techettes, September has brought us a lot of very funky things inside of the ecosystem for Windows and AMD Adrenaline software. Even NVIDIA has been having some really bad days for as far as software, but today hopefully will be a little bit of a brighter day. We're going to be digesting and dissecting the 20.9.2, which is AMD's new optional. If you're looking for more of a standard, you can always go with the 20.4.2. If any of these situations happen to occur where you have any intermittent issues. So my name is Mac here at the MacGyver 7 channel, and today we'll be looking at some benchmarks to see the performance between DirectX 11, DirectX 12, as well as looking at the patch notes to see what changed. But let's go ahead and take a little bit of a look from the force because I hear Star Wars is making the list on the patch notes. Some of the bigger highlights that comes to us for the Adrenaline software in this variant of the second introduction in September is the Star Wars Squadrons. The support on top of that will be for Vulcan, which they have the buffer device address, which extends the use inside the queues for the buff inside the shaders. Also having a robust too for the extension that provides another portion of handling and reading and the writing of out of the boundaries. On top of that, the Vulcan support goes into the shaders and to the image atomic in the 64 portions. Issues that it has addressed. We're looking at some gameplays that exhibited some shuddering intermediate during gameplay on the 5000 series. Hopefully that would be true, but if you are experiencing that, leave a comment down below. I would definitely like to know. Looking at the Radeon FreeSync, it may fail inside of the update of the Radeon without a system reboot, but to be honest, I always like to say do a system reboot even if you don't think it's necessary do a system reboot it totally works after an ecosystem shift especially with AMD and I'll be doing a DDU episode to show everyone how to properly uninstall and reinstall it really simple and really fast but that's something I'll be working on later down the road right now we are working on some patch notes and what we also see to the list goes to MSI and the afterburner is running as it enables on the system software with some flickers the X plane 11 may experience some applications and hanging on to the crashes when utilizing the Vulcan API doom in the VFR experiences and the corruptions in the artifacts in the end game on 5000 system configuration performance in the metrics overlay fell opened and to appear the system of the waking and the sleeping for more hibernationable points of destruction yet again that is like i've never really had good experiences from it in fact the only way i've had good experiences was putting the mode into power with amd mode which is inside your windows button you can kind of do that if you go to more advanced options but that's another story in its own we're looking at what's going on past those um I guess Call of Duty experiencing some black screen textures inside of the ground war portions of zombies in those modes. Um, also looking at the corruptions, they come into Detroit Become Human, very great situation of a um, exclusive kind of making its way for as far as the artifacting points. And then you also have a greater point of situational point of seeing movies and TV applications. And the editing clips may result into a green screen corrupt portions of clips. So the editor on this is not really good. I always suggest you OBS. And OBS just had a really kick butt update. Oh my gosh, it was so cool. It added so many other variants. Uh, but that's neither here or there. What I'm looking at, what's here, is the performance meter and the incorrect values of the VRAM, which extended into the gameplay. It sucks. HDR enabled portions inside of the flickering, which in the task manager had washed out saturation, which I feel like is always something they always say on top of there. Besides that, World of Warcraft, the woe, and the anti-aliasing of DirectX 12 in the API. Launching the Radeon software in the uh, right after the update and upgrade, uh, may occur into the OC dialogue for as far as zero inside of those situations in the Vega. And let me show everyone something really quick before we get into the benchmarks. And, and by the way, yeah, yeah, the known issues are so like nominal now in ways, and they do give you some workarounds for as far as these. So if you are afflicted by these, they're on here. Uh, but I did want to show this. When you do a fresh clean install for the most part, you will be greeted by this message no matter what. 
And what you're probably gonna wanna do is go ahead and you skip the tutorial point. If you go to performance, it's also gonna go down to a, hey, let's go ahead and go to tuning, right? It's instantly gonna give you this. So you have to reset it and rewake it even before it gets into an auto. Um, and you know, it works fine, don't get me wrong, out of the box. But then if you really wanna go to settings and if you had some other things, you can always hit the refresh and that will give you everything. Hopefully this doesn't crash the recording software. Uh, no, we're good here. We're really good here. I guess I'll see that in post edit. Uh, but anyways, everyone. Now let's go ahead and look into the digestion of DirectX 11. And looking into these situations for 20.9.1 and 20.9.2, there's two variants in what we have in optionals now readily. Now, personally, one of the bigger benefactors that I noticed just from doing testing throughout the day and doing variable testing getting down to this point was there was a heat reduction that I noticed usually where my carb would probably run around like almost 79 dabbling to 81 depending on what kind of computing load he would do it actually now is running after me doing the testing of the thermal breakdown around 77 to 76 so I don't know if a lot of other people are having that like cooler card point but I thought that was a really cool thing about 20.9.2 if that's the only thing to reset but DirectX 11 does come in pretty well actually when you look driver to driver it comes in a little bit better performance for as far as the no hardware accelerator on with looking at the hardware accelerator on it beats it when looking at the portion of the variable refreshing now you are going to get something when you do go to the combo it kind of tanks unfortunately on top of that but let's go ahead and look at extreme and ultra and we'll get a more digestion of the 1080p oc and beyond for 4k inside of the format of directx 11. and this is just a better look at the chart that i made for the fire strike course also i know a lot of people have mentioned that the audio sync sometimes can be cruddy and i know that i watch it too it's unfortunately the better quality videos i upload for everyone and the more complex i get them youtube has a really bad time of lag time between um it syncing that up so i apologize everyone i know the standard definition looks so much better and it looks an audio sync it is better but going back and going forward to extreme and ultra this is where you again get to see the optional really shine. It's really nice to see. The only thing that you again get to see is the combination between hardware accelerator and the variable refresh rate. So don't use those combos in this time. It doesn't seem to be that friendly, but with variable refresh rate or hardware accelerator on, it definitely has it. But even just the standard by itself, by no one clicking these on and just having stability, it seems like it gives a lot of good headroom for improvements driver to driver. The trend continues except for now it definitely picks up the pace with being an even balance for as far as 4k ultra um so this is kind of getting me a little bit more excited to hopefully have a um, overclocking episode which is going to be pretty cool for as far as seeing the stability on that i feel like that's something that should be just kind of done nowadays for the optional and eventually i want to make an episode where it's just the standard oc versus the 20.9.2 because my community tells me that it's really freaking cool to overclock 20.4.2 and well i've had my fun experiences with it too so why not you know in today's ecosystem there should be a show off so eventually i'll get to that so a lot of cool stuff's in the cook for the techies and techettes out there that are enjoying the content that i'm putting out there but let's go ahead and jump into directx 12 so we can get a well-rounded robust look at what's going on with this driver ecosystem unfortunately this is where it really does tank you get to see where the optional does fail you in DirectX 12 in that category because you can see that the optional really does flourish. And all these are just the GPU scores. Um, where I was showing before where a lot of people got used to the um, 3D Mark screens and they're really nice and they're really beautiful and I know that a lot of people have definitely asked them and I'm going to try to find another way to integrate both of them um, into the charts side by side. Uh, but these are just pure GPU scores so it doesn't have anything besides no physics, no you know, combo score, it's just, just the GPU scores so we can see what the is going on for as far as the um, changes and this is not really that good when you look at it a little bit closer. So with looking at the extreme hopefully we can see that people utilizing the DirectX 12 are probably not gonna have a fun time and probably gonna have to roll back to the standard. And I'm not quite sure, you know, I would love to hear from the community and what they have to say for what's going on in today's ecosystem of AMD. And I really appreciate all the hearty 
welcomes that a lot of people get when they leave comments and they're always like hey what driver does this work with or is anyone else having this other like problem and it's always a cool community member that i've seen on those chat boards before and i really appreciate that it makes me really happy to see this kind of cool um community so thanks for being a part of it thanks for being a part of this episode and meeting me to the end i'll see you guys and gals in the near future if you're new to the network you can always subscribe it's absolutely free it helps me out as a creator and you can hit that like button and share it as well so we can go around the world and we can all digest the software together to see what the bells and whistles are as we experience it on a 5000 to a radeon 7 to who even knows a 6000 series that are coming out Ooh. october's almost here and amd is going to be releasing some really cool stuff so i'm pretty stoked about that Thanks again for everyone utilizing the community links down below through all those affiliate links through Amazon. Helps me out again as a creator. And if you're just shopping through Amazon, like Amazon Prime Day, you can definitely utilize those. So you can support your boy Mac. I'll see you guys and guys in the near future. And stay classy, stay safe, and I'll see you there. Oh, oh, and if you subscribe today, who knows? Maybe, just maybe, a PlayStation 5 will become a Transformer. Because I'm getting one. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to dissect it too. Yeah. That's going to be cool. I'm going to get a really cool, expensive AMD product, technically. AMD hyphenated. And I'm going to rip it apart. We're going to look at it. And I'm going to make it run again. Because my name's Mac. And you're the Begabby 7 channel.